Having discussed the goal congruent emotions, that was uh, happiness, uh, love and pride. Today we are going to talk about uh, the goal incongruent emotions. So, uh, in the beginning you know, uh, we did talk about the fact that goal congruent emotions primarily uh, consists of the positive emotions, whereas the goal incongruent emotions they are negative in their orientation. Okay. And once again we will find here. Uh, that the uh, no, goal and the ego involvement, these two things would again play an important role. Uh, for the first three uh, uh, emotions that is uh, happiness, love and pride, we did find that uh, you know, the relevance of the goal, the congruence of the goal, okay. these two were important denominators and the third important denominator was involvement of the individual in the whole process. And these three things played important role in terms of appraisal of those specific emotions. So, anger, anxiety, guilt, shame, sadness, envy, jealousy and disgust. So, there is a long list of incongruent emotions and one by one we would discuss uh, know all of them with respect to the appraisal process okay. and we would be primarily concentrating on the primary and the secondary appraisal criteria. So, we first come to the appraisal of anger as you can once again make out uh, that the primary appraisal criteria will always talk about the relevance of the goal, second congruence of the goal and third would be the ego involvement. So, if there is a goal relevance okay, then emotions uh, no any possible emotion can be seen that includes anger also. Okay. If there is a goal incongruence, okay, then you find that only negative emotions are possible. Okay. So, this is now the first difference that we are finding with respect to the congruent and the goal incongruent emotions. Okay. And if the type of ego involvement engaged is to preserve or enhance the self or social esteem aspect of one's ego identity, okay, then the emotion possibilities include anger, anxiety and pride. Now, you see with respect to the ego involvement, okay, once again uh, we had similar type of definition when we were talking about the appraisal of pride. Okay. So, the self esteem and the social esteem both plays important role and therefore, there is a possibility that if you are uh, know, looking with respect to the self and the social esteem. Uh, esteem, then there is a possibility of uh, appraising uh, the experience as anger, as anxiety or it could even be pride. So, there is still no goal congruence incongruence still remains there and therefore, secondary appraisal becomes important in case of anxiety. The secondary uh, appraisal components would be that if there is blame which derives from the knowledge that someone is accountable for the harmful action and they could have been controlled then anger occurs. Okay. And very interestingly uh, there is uh, no uh, an interesting uh, uh, proposition in psychology it is called uh, frustration aggression hypothesis okay. that the very fact that you realize that uh, harm has been caused or there is a threat of harm okay. and then you realize that uh, no, you are losing control over it. Okay. So, that could you know uh, instigate a uh, due sense of frustration in you which in turn will lead to anger. So, if the blame is to another the anger is directed externally and if to oneself then the direction of the anger is inward. Okay. So, basically uh, the distinction in terms of anger, anxiety and pride comes from the secondary appraisal component where you find that there is a harmful situation okay. and this situation okay, uh, there could have been a possibility of manipulation wherein you could have got control over it. Your inability to control the situation might trigger 
anger within you. And anger in the after such type of secondary appraisal could be externally uh, focused, wherein you find the object of harm outside you and you therefore, your action is directed towards that individual or <coughs> there could be a situation where you blame yourself for the inaction okay, and then the anger would be directed towards the self. Okay. Uh, we are not going to that very issue, but uh, uh, again in psychology you will find a good amount of uh, literature on uh, self harming behavior. Okay behavior of the of an individual which is primarily uh, no designed to harm oneself okay and uh, there is again a range of all these actions okay uh, right now we are not going to touch that issue but i thought i'll just mention that the next secondary appraisal component if coping potential favors attack as viable then anger is facilitated okay now, uh, look at how the appraisal is taking place. No? So, if coping potential favors attack, you realize that attack on the source of harm okay, could pacify that unrest within you. So, there is a weighing mechanism now, no? you weigh the option that uh, if I okay, attack the external source, okay, I can still get a partial or full control over the situation. I might get a possibility of further manipulating it okay, and make it in making it in my favor or may giving it the shape of my choice. Okay. Then anger gets facilitated. If future expect, uh, expectancy is positive about the environment response to attack, then again anger is facilitated. Means if you realize okay, that in the future you expect you visualize you are able to you are hypothesizing that your involvement would also appreciate this action on your part then your anger further gets facilitated you could look at uh, the anger expression of an individual okay in one to one setup and even uh, no people uh, who have done a great degree of uh, no harm in terms of their uh, aggressive aggression act aggressive act uh, at a larger scale no where a large number of people have become the victim there also you realize uh, that one the coping mechanism okay so you realize that uh, you attacking the source of harm uh, helps you pacify your anger okay and two you realize that even uh, your environment appreciates you right now and later on when they will uh, know once again revisit this whole episode they will further uh, know applause that fine you are great that you did so. There are many 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 such uh, know descriptions in the history of mankind where you would realize uh, that uh, people decide uh, for a revengeful act okay. and the whole of revenge primarily also has this element that when people of my caste, my religion, okay, my state, my nation okay, uh, or in smaller sections it would be my group. Okay. Uh, if uh, no, they revisit the whole process they will further admire me very good, you could no, had the courage of doing it okay. otherwise uh, no, we were humiliated like anything last time. Okay. So, if you look at uh, the origin of the second world war, no, you again you can in, uh, correlate it to this type of uh, interpretation. I am sure uh, no, uh, uh, usually in boys uh, when uh, somewhere around class 7th, 8th when there is a tendency of peer group formation, no, 4, 5, 6 students no, they will uh, form small groups. When we will come to uh, aggression at that time also we will refer to such processes that a, in a early adolescent uh, stage this is one of the characteristics of adolescence that you tend to form peer groups okay. and uh, these groups usually their sizes are no not more than 6. The reason being that the moment the size goes beyond this the loyalty of the members towards the group decreases. Okay. Therefore, you realize that uh, know, in schools the gangs are of very small sizes, no? 
four, five, six, but there is great degree of loyalty towards the group. Okay. And there are also chances where you engage in some type of an aggressive retaliation with the other group, because you want to prove your superiority. Okay. Uh, many such cases, but that we would know once again touch when we come to aggression, because right now we are uh, only interested in uh, looking at uh, uh, appraisal of emotions and we are trying to finally, relate in emotion to adjustment. Okay. Little later we will uh, relate emotion to health, physical and psychological both. Okay. That is the primary emphasis here, but once again after the just after uh, this uh, module we will come to aggression and there we would once again touch upon uh, all these issues. That would also be the time when uh, uh, if you are interested we will have our first self assessment session, where you will uh, assess your own anger, how angry you are, how do you reflect your anger okay, and what, how do you express it. So, this whole thing. So, uh, this is all about uh, anger. Anger very interestingly, uh, it plays uh, no certain interesting role in terms of our adjustment. Some form of anger, because uh, no, uh, it does if you look at the secondary appraisal process, it does say that if you are expecting that in future, your own environment would appreciate your action, then your anger is further fueled. Okay. Uh, internally, if you realize uh, that your uh, aggressive retaliation pacifies that uh, sense of unrest within you. Okay, then you feel uh, know, uh, showing your anger. This means uh, that anger from these two points of view, it does help you adjust little better. Okay. And usually uh, society, the part of the society which is at unrest would usually admire aggressive behavior compared to society. Uh, which has attained certain degree of stability and hence peace and tranquility is uh, promoted there. Uh, that unevenness you would find in uh, many countries, there could be cases of say uh, economic disparities. Say if you are uh, an adolescent who is uh, living in a uh, uh, family where the neighborhood uh, know is also uh, say business class, service class. Okay. So, they have uh, certain uh, engagements in this world, they also have certain uh, income that is generated out of that engagement and there is you know certain uh, peaceful trajectory on uh, which these families move. Okay. And you realize that your uh, people in your environment, they also move in the same fashion and therefore, greater and greater degree of non aggressive behavior is anticipated in that type of situation, where you realize that there is no point you and me struggling uh, against each other. Okay. We might be uh, no competing against each other, but that uh, no competition is a healthy competition. Say for example, uh, if you and uh, the other friend in your own wing, if both of you are competing for a good grade. Okay, there is no harm in uh, competing against each other, because you are not uh, this uh, competition is not uh, know flavored with uh, that aggressive act. But if you involve in other type of activities, uh, say if you decide to harm your uh, friend in all possible manners, so that he or she is you know deviated from the focus on the studies. Okay, then this becomes a cause of concern. Okay. But if you look at uh, say uh, children of your own age group, uh, who are uh, growing up in a slum for example, okay, where you need to struggle very hard to earn minimal. Okay. So, there is a disproportionate uh, no response that you get out of your entire effort. Effort might be more, return might be less and there you realize that there is far more uh, know, uh, aggressive type of behavior that is shown by a large number of people, because you know that the resources are limited okay, and there is also a possibility of grabbing a higher chunk. To grab higher chunk, you become more aggressive okay. 
and the more aggressive you are you realize that people start surrendering to you and therefore, the secondary derivative becomes little higher. Okay. So, these are interesting interpretations in case of uh, appraisal of anger, but it does help uh, know uh, in terms of striking certain degree of balance both within the individual okay, and it also you know, facilitates the balance in the environment where uh, people would either maintain a distance from you or they would uh, know, uh, not encounter you on certain issues, they would you know, try to check you those who are very closer to you on certain accounts. Okay. So, it gets uh, you know, involved in the whole process of adjustment. Uh, then we come to another uh, important uh, goal incongruent emotion that is fright. Once again if there is a goal relevance then fright can come forward, if there is goal incongruence okay, uh, which is a threat to bodily integrity by a sudden concrete harm then only negative emotions are possible which also includes fright. Okay. And ego involvement is typically not relevant for the generation of fright. So, basically it is a sudden threat that you consider that uh, exists in your environment that could be uh, harmful for your own existence. You could uh, know have uh, <coughs> some uh, mutilation to your body part and therefore, you realize that there is a possibility of uh, absconding from such type of situation. Secondary appraisal, no secondary appraisal components are essential, blame is irrelevant, coping potential is uncertain okay. uh, and therefore, even future expectancy is uh, no not visualized. So, all you decide is that this could be dangerous situation okay, and therefore, run away from this situation escape this situation, because the threat that you perceive is much higher. Okay. Again if you perceive that the threat is higher and then you decide to run away it facilitates your adjustment. Now, we come to anxiety, if there is goal relevance of course, no uh, there are multiple possibilities including anxiety, if there is goal incongruence. Okay. Then uh, no, only uh, negative emotions are possible which includes anxiety and if the type of ego involvement is, put, uh, is uh, no, protection of personal meaning or ego identity against existential threat, then okay, emotion possibilities they gradually narrow down to anxiety. Now, goal relevance, goal incongruence common. No, across these negative uh, emotions, but when it comes to ego involvement, you feel protecting uh, no, yourself against personal meaning that you attach to something okay. or your ego identity okay, uh, against certain existential threat means you as Mr. X or Miss X okay, realizes that the way people view me, the way people perceive me that is under threat okay. and then this can lead to greater source of anxiety. Okay. Uh, bad example to quote, but let me do that. Uh, say everybody knows uh, that you are in your uh, third or fourth year of your BTEC uh, program at IIT Kanpur. Okay. There is certain degree of ego involvement in this, you return back home. Uh, no family takes pride in declaring oh right now he is in the third year, fourth year just few semesters and done. Okay. Your neighbors uh, look at you with certain sense of dignity, you take pride in this, till now it was all good, now I am adding a bad flavor to it, suddenly you realize uh, no, that uh, you have been put under the warning category. <coughs> Okay, deficiency in the grades put under the warning condition and subsequent semester you are given a termination letter. Okay. There is a great threat to your existence in a sense okay, uh, that your ego involvements tell you that fine my ego identity is under great danger, how will I face my parents, how will I face my neighbors. 
okay, till now I was taking pride in what I was and suddenly you tell me you are flushed out of the system. Okay. Such type of situations therefore, it will generate huge amount of anxiety within you, because you realize that your status in your environment suddenly is at a stake. Okay. So, when we say that your it creates an existential threat to your identity, this is what it means. Again, no secondary appraisal components are essential, uh, blame okay, or uh, coping, future expectancy all these are no uncertain. All you primarily focus upon is your ego involvement, the fact that your ego identity is under threat okay, and you have to safeguard it. Okay. You do not know, it is uncertain whether you would uh, finally, be able to successfully accomplish it or not and that is the source of anxiety. Now, we come to the appraisal of guilt. Again uh, goal relevance uh, you know, can induce multiple emotions which includes guilt also and uh, goal uh, incongruence can lead to negative emotion including guilt. Again we come to the ego involvement. If the type of ego involvement is to manage a moral transgression, okay, then emotion possibility uh, possibilities narrow to anger anxiety guilt or disgust so you have four options you remember the first uh, option we discussed where we had two negative and one positive uh, emotion there no pride was there here ego involvement gives you four possibilities but all four are negative okay because you re, uh, realize that your involvement of your ego in the process okay uh, demands that you know, there is a possibility of a moral transgression. Moral transgression would be that there is a line that you have drawn that this is the final line nobody should cross it. And if you happen to cross this line then this behavior is not justified. And you realize uh, that this very act okay, is about to cross this line. No? So, that is the transgression of the moral line that you have drawn if you realize that your behavior is finally leading towards transgression of the line violating that ethical line that you yourself have drawn okay there could be a possibility of anger why am i doing that okay anxiety i don't know what would happen guilt worthless or complete disgust okay why did i do this therefore secondary appraisal will become important here because there is still with primary appraisal there are four negative possibilities. So, if blame is to oneself, then guilt has to come, okay. means you hold yourself responsible, then guilt has to come. If coping potential is favorable, then guilt may be expedited by apology and or making amendments. Okay. This means that you realize that uh, no, I can still cope with the situation if I beg sorry, if I go and apologize. Okay. Then you realize that uh, no, this guilt is a manageable guilt. If future expectations are also positive, okay, favorable, okay, then guilt may be mitigated or reduced. If you realize that in future my apology, okay, uh, my amended behavior, modified behavior will uh, know, make uh, the my environment happier about uh, my behavior at that point in time and therefore, uh, this shameful act will be you know, not uh, repeatedly brought forward. Okay. Then you realize that this guilt is there is a possibility of mitigating it, okay. but the worst could be when you realize okay, uh, that there is no point apologizing, apology means nothing okay. or my apology is not going to fetch me uh, the real pardon okay. or when you realize that however, uh, however best I try people are not going to forget what I did okay. and this could lead to a great sense of guilt okay. and uh, usually you would therefore, realize that uh, uh, there are 
several types of practices that uh, you will find in almost all culture. Okay. Uh, like uh, in certain uh, religious uh, practices where you have the confession box, you are supposed to go there and confess something that you cannot confess to the rest of the world. Uh, Facebook is now uh, know one place where people are confessing several things. I do not know if you have uh, read uh, those things, somebody told me and uh, one night I invested reading all those confessions. Okay. Uh, some time back I think two semesters back uh, for the students of this course, we had uh, one in camera confession session. Okay. Uh, where something that really perturbs you within, okay, you can share it, not in front of others, but it is only in front looking at the camera and saying that this is what I did. And, but all those are confidential outputs, no? so not to be shared. But you realize that there is a great degree of uh, relief that you feel after you confess. It reminds me of a true example, <coughs> minus the names I will quote it. Uh, somebody <coughs> who was uh, into business, uh, a young uh, entrepreneur uh, who had a wife, a small daughter perhaps, daughter or son, one small child and uh, his old mother, all of them used to uh, live in one of the metros here in our country. And they also used to have a maid, uh, adolescent uh, maid, who was primarily to take care of uh, you know, the cleaning of the houses and utensils, also taking care of the baby, the full time maid. Uh, one uh, night, uh, what happened that uh, the wife and uh, the child of this man, they had gone to their parents house. Okay. Uh, so, mother, son and the maid, only these three people were there in the house and uh, he did have uh, know, some socially unexpected, unjustified, immoral act uh, that he thought, he visualized and then somewhere late in the night, he just got out of his room and entered the room of the maid. Okay. But before he could get engaged in any action, he could realize that there is somebody on the door. The door was open and he could sense that only three of us are here in the house, this means my mother is there at the door. This man did not do anything, walked out of the room, had great degree of uh, know, uh, apologetic feeling within him. But since then, his mother never ever talked uh, to him on this issue. Okay. And uh, after I think a passage of couple of months, maybe close to an year, okay, this man uh, know, developed a great degree of guilt which was influencing, affecting him psychologically. That was the reason he was uh, know, made to visit a consultant psychologist. Okay. And this whole issue was that see, I was motivated for an action which is immoral, but I did not do anything. I just entered the room when I could sense that my mother was at the door. I want my mother to question me and I want to apologize for this feeling, but I also want to tell her that I did not do anything. But my mother is not even talking to me on this issue. Okay. Now, this is where no, you realize that the whole blame has been shifted to you, okay. the first secondary appraisal criteria, no? that the blame is to oneself and you just you realize that I want to uh, know, apologize the second part of it, which will help me cope with it, but my mother is not allowing me the opportunity to confess, to apologize. Okay. And therefore, this guilt, uh, know, the feeling of guilt becomes so unsurmountable that you realize that uh, you are getting psychologically affected out of that feeling. 
Okay. There are uh, no uh, other good stories also related to uh, such type of feeling. <coughs> uh, I must have shared this with you uh, that uh, somebody who used to travel uh, from one location to other in Bombay okay, after uh, several years uh, when he joined a job and had a consistent earning, he wrote to the Indian railways that uh, I have travelled for these many days between this and this station. So, you know, tell me raise a bill saying what would be the total cost okay, and also add interest to it, because I want to have a feeling that nahi baba, I have paid everything to railways. No? So, no burden on me. If you talk to elderly people in the community, uh, they will tell you that uh, usually people uh, who are on their death beds. Okay when you know that death is inevitable, it could be this moment or the next moment. At that point you would realize that many people share certain things that they have never ever shared with others. Okay. And usually there is a tendency at least in uh, our uh, context, where these elderly people would apologize for certain acts. The primary reason you want to die guilt free okay. and that would be a peaceful type of a death that what I did was okay, what uh, I could not do or what I did and should not have done, I apologize for it. You want to get rid of the guilt. I remember one thing that uh, if you look at the psychological disorders, okay, it has a strong connection to anxiety and guilt both. Okay. So, extreme of anxiety if you have to live with it and extreme of guilt if you have to live with it, both are unbearable type of emotions, okay. because you have to pay a heavy uh, price for it, because your psychological balance will be at stake. We now come to shame, once again uh, goal relevance, multiple emotions are possible, uh, shame is also one of the possibilities. Okay and it has to be a goal incongruent type of a situation. Coming to ego involvement, okay, if the type of ego involvement is to manage a failure, okay, you are managing a failure to live up to an ego ideal, then the possible emotion narrows to anger, anxiety, shame and disgust. Now, guilt is out of the picture. Okay. All you want to do is, you want to manage certain failure. Why? Because there is an ego ideal. Ego ideal means something that you uh, think that this is what should certainly be achieved. Okay. A little later we will come to something called uh, understanding the self. Okay. And there we would be talking about uh, no, three types of selves, no? uh, the real self, the ideal self and the odd self real self you know what I am, okay. ideal self is the highest of uh, you know, the self that you think of and the odd self falls in between. This is where I am, this is the ideal standard, but minimum of this level should certainly be attained and you would be trying to attain that odd self level. Okay. So, you are trying to manage the failure okay, just so that you can live to the ego ideal level. And then there is a possibility of four different uh, negative emotions and therefore, secondary appraisal becomes important. First secondary appraisal component, if blame is to oneself, then the possible emotion narrows down to shame. Okay. Means for failure, you are responsible, so great degree of shame. If coping potential is favorable, then shame can be mitigated by promising to uh, redouble efforts to live up to the standard. Okay. So, I missed my first quiz, okay. why? Because uh, most of the days I used to be absent and one of the, one of the days uh, you know, suddenly the quiz was held, so I missed it. I asked if it can be uh, compensated and I was told no. Okay. So, all I do is that I accept that I was responsible, I blame myself for missing the first quiz 
and therefore, I make sure that next exam onwards I will certainly be there and I will be the highest achiever in the class. So, that I compensate for whatever 10 percent I have missed uh, for the first quiz. Okay. So, you redouble your effort in, try in your attempt to compensate it and if future expectations are favorable then shame can be mitigated or reduced along with you know, a threat or abandonment. No? So, uh, if you are able to visualize that future is manageable, if you uh, realize uh, know that uh, you can manage the failure by doing something extra and that in turn can pacify this uh, uh, sense of shame, then these are manageable shame. Okay. But if you realize that uh, know the blame is directed exclusively to yourself, that then the intensity of that uh, emotion will increase. And therefore, usually in the case of shame it lives for some time <coughs> and people would try to you know compensate it, people would try to uh, you know put their hard effort for something that they have not been able to achieve okay. and they realize that in future I can certainly overcome it and therefore, uh, life of shame as an emotion does not last too long unlike guilt which might have a longer life. Then we come to sadness, once again goal rele uh, relevance uh, any emotion is possible including sadness, uh, goal incongruence has to be there. If there is a loss to any type of ego involvement, any type of ego involvement which includes uh, steam, moral value, ego ideal, meaning, ideas, persons, well-being, okay, life goals. If there is a loss of any of this, you tend to be sad. Okay. So, there is a long list of items that you can lose and which can induce sadness in you. If there is no blame, then sadness has to come. Okay. If blame is external or internal, then other emotions will come up, sadness would not come and those other emotions uh, could be anxiety, it could be guilt. Okay. If coping potential is favorable, okay, the loss can be restored or compensated for, then sadness may not occur at all, okay. because temporary state of sadness is there, but then you realize that I can restore to the earlier stage, I can compensate for it. Okay. So, I am sad that I missed 10 percent of the first quiz, but the moment the instructor says that yes, we will I can have compensatory quiz, there is a broad smile, sadness is gone, because you know that there is a compensatory mechanism. Okay. If future expectations are favorable, then sadness is associated with hope okay, and not hopelessness or depression, but if future expectancies are not favorable, then sadness its intensity gets you know more and more stronger. So, heightened intensity of sadness would be the state of hopelessness, when you lose hope usually we do not. Sadness is a temporary state and therefore, the feeling of hopelessness that we experience in sadness does not last too long, but the secondary appraisal criteria says that if you realize that uh, the future expectancy is unfavorable, this means that this state will continue for long, then sadness no more remains sadness, it starts converting into a state of hopelessness. Okay. And if hopelessness further intensifies, it might make you depressed. Then we come to envy. Of course, goal relevance has to be there, goal incongruence has to be there. In terms of ego involvement, if what is possessed by another involves a major lack in any of the six types of ego involvement, okay, the possible emotion narrows down to envy. Basically, different types of ego involvements okay, and if you realize that what other has you are not 
worried about what he has or she has, what other has if that makes you realize that oh you do not have it, then only envy will come. If I do not process it, if you are possessing something does not make me realize that I am deficient on that, then envy is not at all going to crop in. Okay. Again no secondary appraisal components are uh, essential. Okay. So, primarily it is the different type of ego involvement, which only makes you realize that somebody has it and see poor chap you do not have it. This realization will only trigger this type of an emotion. Then we come to jealousy, uh, once again goal uh, relevance has to be there, goal incongruence has to be there. In terms of uh, ego involvement, if the desire for no, uh, another person's affection or favor, which is threatened to be or has been taken by another, okay, constitutes a major threat okay, to any of the types of uh, six basic uh, ego involvements, then jealousy crops in. This means, I enjoy the favor of somebody, I enjoy the affection of somebody okay. and if I realize that you have uh, no, uh, now got this type of uh, no involvement by the other person means the I realize that the other person who was affectionate to me is now affectionate to you. If I realize the other person who was favorable to me is now favorable to you okay. and then I realize okay, that his affection or her affection towards you or favor towards you. Uh, is a cause of concern, it puts a threat to my ego involvement, okay. then jealousy will crop in. Okay. So, there has to be a threat perception, which is with respect to uh, no, somebody else's involvement in other person, which you consider to be uh, no, threat for your own self. Now, if there is an external blame, then the possible emotion narrows down to jealousy means other person is responsible, I am not responsible. Okay. If I am responsible, then it would not be jealousy, you know, then it goes towards the blame direction. I did this and therefore, he did not invest, he is now no more favorable to me, rather he is now favorable to him or her. Okay. So, uh, the blame has to be external, a favorable coping potential helps modestly uh, to uh, keep jealousy alive but not to a very crucial level. Okay. A negative, but not hopeless future expectation is there and uh, basically uh, it would be like say short lived type of a phenomena, okay, where uh, you feel the threat for certain period of time until you realize that you are able to manage that you are jealous. And then we come to disgust, perhaps the last one. Again, goal relevance has to be there, goal incongruence has to be there. In terms of ego involvement, if any of the six types of ego involvement is at risk of being contaminated by poisonous ideas, okay, then disgust might occur. Okay, and no secondary operational component is involved in disgust. So, uh, what we have done today is primarily we have looked at the whole set of uh, uh, negative emotions and primarily what we were trying to uh, look at the fact was uh, that ego involvement is primarily the source of all types of goal incongruent emotions according to uh, Lazarus. Okay. Uh, because in all the case you realize that uh, goal relevance by default remains, goal incongruence by default remains, it is only uh, certain types of variations that you feel in terms of involvement of the ego, where different types of uh, goal incongruent emotions or negative emotions crop in. Some negative emotions which are short lived like say anger for example, okay, anxiety for example, okay. but if this anger sustains for a longer period, if this anxiety sustains for a longer period, if a sense of guilt sustains for a longer period, okay, then 
they make you pay a heavy price for it your adjustment okay no more uh, no retains that level of equilibrium there is a great uh, disharmony and this disharmony you would realize uh, is reflected in both ways when you interact with your environment okay then also you uh, you feel that you are not able to come forward okay with the desired type of uh, responses which, which earlier made you very well adjusted in a given situation okay so now you are not able to do that and two you pay a price for you know uh, having retained these type of uh, goal incongruent emotions for longer period of time when we meet next we would primarily be talking about uh, the effect of uh, emotions both goal incongruent and goal congruent emotions okay on health of an individual so how our health and well being is associated with uh, emotional states right now what we did was how emotion affects adjustment okay and now we are uh, going to talk about emotion and how it influences our health both physical and mental health okay so we'll take just one or two examples we would also look at two models which primarily describes illness okay and that would be the end of uh, this module which was focusing exclusively on emotion and adjustment